Coming up, when the going gets tough, the Brooklyn Nets say, screw it and bail. We break down another loss for the Nets, how they continue to fade and show a total lack of effort, which everybody top to bottom agrees. We dive in coming up next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. Over there is Doug Nori. I'm Adam Armbrecht. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And let you know, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. And Doug, 105-93, Brooklyn falls on the road to the Knicks, and all of the familiar themes are on the table for the Nets. Well, buddy, it was, uh, again, grasping a defeat from the jaws of victory, which has become something of a theme for the Nets this year. And there's just a great there's a great way to kind of sum up this game from a high-level perspective about like sort of where things were and then where things went. Because <laughs> at, three, at 341, <laughs> left in the third quarter, Dennis Schroeder hits a layup. They're up 74-71. From that point on, so 341 to the 210 mark in the fourth quarter, which represents when they raise the white flag, Kevin Ali, and removes all the starters, the Nets had scored 10 points. They are excuse me, 12 points. They were had now 86 points. And one of them, or excuse me, three of them was a desperation three from Cam Thomas at the buzzer that basically hit the the jumbotron at, at msg and just somehow <laughs> went in so they basically over a uh 13 minute stretch roughly they scored a total of 12 points three of them which were desperation and i think a f- another four of them were at the foul line there it was just another example I would love for mediocrity because mediocrity would be a step up around where this team is playing. We aspire to be mediocre in these late. Uh, games. Oh my god, my, we'd be we'd be doing we'd be doing <laughs> we'd be doing dances in the streets if they were mediocre. They just completely mm-hmm. roll over. No, the effort was terrible. The scheme was terrible. Everything was terrible, and it just gets harder and harder every game to like make to kind of grasp at any positive straws from this from this team because. Even when it looks okay, the second the other team gets a little glimmer in their eye that they can that the Nets may be on the ropes, it's over. It's over. Like they have no chance. And this was just another example: twelve points in roughly a thirteen-minute stretch, and that just kind of tells the whole story of the game. Yeah, and it's disappointing too because you know, I went over. You look at um, fourth quarter scoring. I mean, obviously the Brooklyn Nets have been a team that struggles in any category, every category, all throughout the game. Well, but oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I was going to say they scored 16 points in the third quarter, but fourth quarter, but you can't even count it because six of those were just garbage time. The game was over. And well, so and, and by they the really way, scored 10. Po- they really scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. Well, and that's by the way, this actually does tie into the theme we were talking about in these last handful of episodes or over the last few weeks, really about Mikhail Bridges and some of his performances. Right. And you go and you look at the box score and you say, well, he had 17 points that game or he scored, you know, 12, 11, whatever it ends up being. But when you drill down on it, you're like, right. But. But X percentage, usually 30, 40 percent of those points are basically coming when the game is over, when it's out of reach, just yeah. before they wave the fl- white flag, just before they go into garbage time, whatever the case may be. And on the one hand, you want to say, well, it still matters whether you're trying to close the gap or whatever it may look like. But specifically in this game against the Knicks, it was over. None of these points mattered. And closing the gap in a 16, a 16 point fourth quarter in today's NBA is just absolutely atrocious. And. One of the things that I looked at over on, where was I at? I was on teamrankings.com just pulling up some of the numbers. And we know the Nets are, are a bad team overall. But they are 21st in terms of fourth quarter points per game at 27 and a half points. You know that New York is 24th out of 30 teams at 27.1? Like it's one of those things where even when you look over at a team and the Knicks are good and they're trying to make playoff hay and they want to get their positioning and all those stuff, all that stuff, there are still these categories where certain opponents you think you should be able to, if you're in the game, like they were late in the third quarter, go to the fourth quarter and give yourself a real opportunity to win a basketball game. That just hasn't been the theme for this team over the last month and a half, two months of the season. 
it's always going to be whatever they can do to fumble it away, whatever they can do to not maximize their opportunity, they're going to take full advantage of that. Like this game, I stupidly, I said this before we started, stupidly convinced myself, maybe just before that run started at the end of the third quarter, oh, in a bad season that's gone off the rails, that doesn't have meaning, meaningful basketball, you could hand the New York Knicks a really bad blow yeah. as they're trying to hang on to where they are in the playoffs, maybe make a little bit of edge, move up the board. You can hand them kind of what would be up for them, an embarrassing loss. And I don't know how I managed to convince myself that, even for 30 seconds, because then you get to the fourth quarter and you see the way it unravels, and that's all too familiar for this team. Yeah, it's just been, you know, over the last 10 games, they're one and nine. They rank in the bottom of the league, uh, near the bottom of the league, about bottom third in both offense and defense. It's one of the worst 10 game stretches in all in the entire NBA. Um, like point stop. And this includes teams that are actively trying to lose, right? Yeah. Because they're just trying to enjoy, uh, they're trying to better their draft position. And so, it's like this is where the Nets just simply have no excuses. I, they will talk, you know, in a little bit about some of the quotes around effort. So I guess they recognize it. They've done very little to address it, right? So they get into these situations where they're kind of in the game. They have the requisite talent to stay in these games. Like I, I, they're not a tanking team. Like between Cam Thomas, two points in the fourth quarter, Mikhail Bridges, zero points in the fourth quarter, right? Like repeatedly getting bot, um, losing offensive rebounds where they thought they lost the game pretty bad. You know, I'm just talking about hustle things, 16 to eight in terms of offensive yeah. rebounding, uh, 15 to nine, they lose the turnover battle, right? So like these uh, 14 to 11, they lose the blocks and steals. So um, just looking at things that like might be quant when you're trying to quantify effort, right? Besides just looking with your eyes, which yeah. sometimes can also tell the story too. Um, but there are stats that I think that help quantify some things that you would uh, ascribe with effort and the Nets just lose all those battles too. And yeah. at this point, there's just simply no excuse. There's it's no one was expecting this team to be good for sure. I like the expectations. I think were already pretty low and they had to be right. We had everyone kind of understood where the team was going, but when you couple low expectations with low effort, this is what you get. You get one of the worst teams in the league. And you just look across the NBA. Cause I watched a couple other games um, last night and just like, just kind of looking around at other teams that also have nothing to play for. You know, like mm -hmm. Toronto, this Toronto team hangs with the Wizards. They end up losing to Washington, who's actually lost won a couple games in a row. But they start, they were starting like, you know, Ramsey at point guard, right? right? Oje Ag Agbaji, right? They had no, no Emmanuel quickly, no RJ Barrett, uh, no Jakob Hurdle, right? Like all these guys are already out for this team. And, and at least the effort is there. But like with the Nets, it's just repeated lack of effort. And that's like, at some point, as a fan, you're just kind of thinking to yourself, well, I mean, can we at least try? They have the talent to win some of these games. They should not be losing every game. That That's the biggest piece to me. And we said, I think we've mentioned this before, but that, that's what it keeps coming back to. Okay, the team's bad. You're not going to the playoffs. We understand that. I think they're, what, five and a half now back from the uh, five, from the final? I mean, they uh, might as well be a million. They might as well be a yeah, million. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Like, so it, that that part's over. I stopped six, counting that Six a long inches time or 30 ago. miles, this team isn't getting there. Bottom it doesn't line. matter. We it doesn't all know matter, that. Right. right. But right. but the point being, okay, you're nowhere near that. But again, because of the talent you have on the roster, it does it does make games like this and this run one and nine, as you said over the last ten, it makes it feel inexcusable. Because just just from a talent standpoint, you should not be this bad. And the only way you get there is by having a team that largely is checking out when they step on the court. They're talking about giving you a couple of quarters of effort. If it looks like it's going to fade, they're going to pack it in. And, and, and we always say, like, it's hard to gauge those types of things. Everybody wants to win, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? Coming up here in a second, we'll tell you why we know it's a fact. Because Kevin Ollie said as much, and Cam Johnson went ahead and stamped the quotes, suggesting that the Brooklyn Nets do not give max effort, do not stay dialed in, and do not do the little things that are necessary to win basketball games. We'll get into that in just one moment. All right, did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost subscription fees apply and now for some legal info claim as of q1 2024 validated by radius global market research investing involves risk including loss limitations apply to iras and 401k three percent match 
requires a Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, a registered broker dealer. Also want to tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle. Leveled up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, so much more. You might be in the speed, power, or style. eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. You got an eBay guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back with eBay Motors. You're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP. Bring home that win. Keep your ride, dial, ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right. So as we continue to talk about not only the New York Nick loss here for the Brooklyn Nets 105-93, fading hard in the fourth, but also just the overall themes for this team of late. Quotes coming out of this game, Doug. This is always good, I think, to see. Paraphrasing here a little bit because, er, uh, excuse me, er, Eric Slater asking Kevin Ollie in the post game. Kevin Ollie does go on to an extended version of this, but basically says they just wanted it more and you could see it. That's why we're where we're at. And he goes on to say, we cannot afford to be beaten out on the little hustle plays. We cannot afford to lose the effort plays. That's not a team. We are not a team that has the margin for error to be able to do that and still be competitive and still win basketball games. But worse than that, I thought was, because this has been Ali, I think, consistently since he took over. He's been pretty direct about the areas of, of issue that the team has and where they need to improve if they want to win games. Cam Johnson, when asked basically the same about Kevin Ali's remarks, quote, I agree. There's got to be a line drawn. It's one thing that leads to another that piles up negatively. It's something we're susceptible to, something that happens to us often, but we don't have bounce back. I mean, I'll just say quickly here, and then there's this, there's the quote that we want to get to from Josh Hart from the New York Knicks, which is also I've been a little bit lighthearted uh, for us on the podcast. Cam Johnson saying got to draw a line. Buddy, <laughs> you, you, you just lost to the Knicks. You are want to get that number right, 26 and 45. When are you drawing the line and when are you pushing back against something that has been a theme now for almost the entirety of the season for this basketball team? On the one hand, you want to not acknowledge it and say, yep, it's true. Like the coach is right. We need to fix these things. But it also has a sense of, yeah, we really got to look into that. Boy, yeah. if, we, if we can just crack down on that, we could turn this thing around. It, it's over. The season is done here. At some point, I kind of only want to hear, yeah, like we we can't fix it. Like it, that's broken well, and we yeah. cannot fix it. And they're never going to hear that from players. I know, but it's just, it's frustrating to kind of hear like the soft acknowledgement from players without just the full reality of what's happening. Yeah. It's a terrible situation. I, like everyone is, there's no effort. And then there's like sort of no accountability either. Or there's like, you know, fake accountability in the form of, I mean, whatever the opposite of platitudes is. So it's like these, these little, these quotes, I mean, I guess it to be some acknowledgement that, it's not just they're not totally talking in circles. And it's interesting, too, because I thought early in the game, the, the Nets actually had a pretty good strategy, which I was like, oh, I, I, they, did, they did some pretty good tape work, I think, here on the on the Knicks, where they were really limiting Jalen Brunson at the point of attack better than they kind of have for a lot of times a season. Now, Brun they got a little lucky because Brunson missed a bunch of shots that he usually makes. Mm -hmm. And so I think this actually score maybe could have been worse, honestly, because it like Brunson was easily missing stuff that he has made kind of all year. But I thought we saw a really good effort from Mikhail Bridges, a point of attack was something we haven't seen tons of. They were able to stop these like mini in the paint drives from Brunson that where he kind of stops and turns around and, and sidesteps you and understeps you and mm -hmm. like gets to the basket and they did a good job. But then so I'm like, even when the execution on something is OK and you have these other things going your way, this is where the effort should really kick in. Because you're like, oh, now we've actually kept ourselves in the game. The game plan has kind of worked. We're in this thing. We're winning. We have a chance. And then it's just fold city. Yeah. And I could deal with I could deal with one thing where it's like trade baskets, lose on a coin flip. Sure. Right? Like, because I, I, I we, we, okay, it, it, we'd have a different, we'd still be disappointed, but the conversation would be different. This wasn't that. This was stop playing. <laughs> it's over. Right. It got to us. They wanted it more. Oops, this happened. Again. Oops, we did it again. To quote the great Britney Spears, one of the all-time great poets. And 
it's and this is just what it is. And so I, I can't tell if it's good or bad to have everyone acknowledge it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, do you no, yeah, I guess that's kind of right. Like, so to the point, I'm like, well, on the one hand, I like that Kevin and I, so we used to talk about Jock Vaughn, right? Uh, there's a lot of lessons we can take out of these things. A lot of good yeah. themes. We'll get back to it. You know, kumbaya. Don't worry about us. And you go, oh, that's really frustrating. You got to at least admit what's going wrong here. Kevin Ali is saying, hey, this is what's not happening. Cam Johnson is going, I, I totally agree. There's there's no way to sugarcoat it. And then, but once they finish making those statements, you go, Well, that's not good. Like, you know, it's not, it's not because to your point, if it was, man, we're we're kind of getting self-defeated around, we're trading buckets, we're in these games, these are playoff teams that we're battling with. And then down the stretch, the unfortunate bounce, the bad luck, right? Like those things are where we're losing them. And there's a, a cumulative impact of being in a game for four quarters and coming up short. This is, as yeah. you say, more. Well, we gave the best we had for three quarters, and we just kind of felt like it wasn't going to go our way. So why really get down and dirty with some of the nitty-gritty plays to try to get across the line? And again, like it's easy to look at this game where you mentioned about how you have Mikhail Bridges doing a solid job defensively against Brunson. You have him having a you know better offensive game than we've seen of him from late. And we cannot see, though, the version of this where this team can pass the baton between players sometimes. All right, who's going to pick this up and, and get us through this lull at the end of the third quarter and into the fourth? Who's going to allow us to reset ourselves? They very much are a team that once that ball is rolling downhill, it's not everybody rush to it and try to dig your heels in and, and create a stop point. It's mostly, hey, get out of the way, man. This thing's going to be a mess. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be in front of this boulder by the time it gets to the bottom. And there's a little bit of self-preservation, I think, in that that's unfortunate because you also have these veteran players, young players. There's this this weird combination, and then you throw in the expectations of this season, and I just think it's one of those weird things. Like game to game, you end up having the weight of the entire year, I think, fall onto these yeah, players yeah. after well, three you, quarters, right? It's really hard to get out of these situations from like a mental standpoint. It's like it's when – it's like it's 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 sort of the same. It's not same exact, but it's like similar to the situation when Detroit loses a million games in a row. Right. It's like it gets impossible. If, it's like, oh, here we go again. Right. right. Oh, right. We, we can't do this. It's like we can't get over this hump. We can't. It, we I, we already know how the story ends. Right. We chose the adventure. And every time we choose the, the, the page that ends with us just falling into the cliff. You right. Die like, in a cave. Yeah. It's like, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. And, and yeah. it, it, that is there is a mental aspect of this. And and the Nets, too, it's like it's so funny because, like you know, you know, we talked about Bridges defense. I thought like other guys did a good job early too. like Claxton mm -hmm. did a good job point of attack that they sacrificed some rebounding because of it when they switch on to these brunch and actions. Even Schroeder was a Schroeder was a stable to stay in front of him. Like I thought there was like this effort was there. But then it's just like you said, when it when when push comes to shove, they get shoved over and over and over again I, I and, and it's like and you also can't like hold one you just have to it's like everyone's accountable this is the other thing too when there's right. no real clear like hierarchy of like who the best players are or like how the organization is top down you're not you just you don't even know who to hold accountable it's like well they all they're all accountable or no one's accountable or i or i just like, don't even know well, yeah, what the story is by the way coming up here in a second that might be the other side of this is there full and total accountability or is there no accountability down the stretch of this season which makes it easier for this team and these players and maybe even this coaching staff to just always say waving the white flag is not as punitive as a decision as it might be for any other team across the league we'll get into that side of things coming up next all right, make myself feel better here. Talk about our friends over at Prize Picks. Demon time on Prize Picks, baby. You can win up to a hundred times your money with as few as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars. You got demons and goblins. It's the newest, most exciting way to play over at Prize Picks. You got squares that are marked with red demons or red goblins. They're going to give you different kinds of payouts, That's depending on how many easier, maybe difficult those numbers are to hit. You can win up to a hundred times your money just as few as four correct picks all you're doing on prize picks is you're going more or less on the prize picks projections with the nba that's points assist block steals uh oh rebounds i forgot the all the nets don't do it so i just forgot about the rebounds you're going more or less on those uh stats like i said up to a hundred times your money just four uh correct picks all you're doing right now you go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown nba use the code lockdown nba first deposit match up to 100 dollars that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use that code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.
All right, so as we tie a bow on the Brooklyn Nets, not only loss, but again, just the, the general sentiment of where this season is headed. Before we talk about maybe a lack of accountability, before we drill down a little bit on Nicholas Claxton here, we mentioned Kevin Ollie, we mentioned uh, Cam Johnson, but there was yeah. also a, a player quote coming from the other side and one Josh Hart, who obviously has ties with Brunson and with Mikhail Bridges going back to the college days. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> this is so funny. I, this I want a troll job by heart here. And like, uh, you know, we way, always like 100%, like point stop. This was not, oh, what an interesting way to frame this conversation. He was specifically, hey, give me the mic. I got, let, let me cook here for 30. So joking before the game, I was like, you know, the over under how many Villanova references we got. Cause we all, we, we just hear this every single time. It's like, oh, do you know that Mikhail Bridges and Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo all went to Villanova together? I mean, what? they actually credit to the credit to the, I, I watched some of the Knicks feed on this one. They did, really didn't mention it too much. So anyway, Josh Hart after the game uh, is asked about the situation. Now, but the, by the way, they were all three were seen talking at half court again these guys are friends like no one would ever you know of course you talk to your friends yeah. like these guys um have a long relationship podcasting they've done podcasts together blah 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 uh the josh hart quote is it's like that spongebob meme where squidward is looking out the window and he sees spongebob and patrick having fun michaela squidward uh and that was his quote <laughs> about bridges again total troll job right um appreciate the effort for sure yeah. and you're taking a dig at somebody uh you know whatever you want to call this it is another oh, testament's the wrong word. It is another clear signal of how off the rails this season has gone when you can just have quotes like this right. and they're not met with like fury or anything like that. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, <laughs> like, right? Like, because and now I get usually I don't get I don't we don't really get too wrapped up in this stuff because I think it's mostly theater. Um, and that's fine. It's like it's just it is what it is. You're asked to give quotes, and most of them are pretty much, you know, pretty vanilla. There would have been a time where this one would have been met with like some kind of like fury, but around a certain group of the fan base or just being super annoyed. Most people were just like, yeah, totally. It stinks. And it's like, and it just move on. And I think if anything, it's just another sign of just how far things have fallen here in terms of the, uh, the grit level, right. <laughs> or the, or the, uh, yeah. Or just, uh, yeah. Grit, I guess is the right word. It's just because it's gone down to zero because everyone's like, yeah, shrug your shoulders, move on. Another loss. Here we go. Yeah. Well, you said this before, though, um, and I'll, I'll I'll butcher I'll butcher it. Right. The the only thing worse than like, you know, than than anger or frustration is indifference. Right. And that's yeah. and that's where it is right now. Right. Like, yeah, I guess you could say whatever you want. Yeah, that's probably true. We go you go ask me. And we said this about Mikhail Bridges. Right. A month ago, it was and I give us the best chance to win. And it's frustrating. And I want to be out there. And now. Like th those quotes aren't there. Like it, it's almost going back to the Cam Johnson one where it's like, yeah, like that is true. Like we are struggling in those areas and we need to draw, you know, draw a line in the sand. Okay. You know, we've been 20 now, 30 games of this, the, the, the sand, it's not a sand, it's concrete. They put a line in the concrete that dried over and you cannot get back over, well, you know, back across it. So yeah. Cause think about how bad indifference is, because if you think about relationships, just any relationship you have, right. To a sports team, to a, you know, a, a relationship that you're with, like with another person, like you're whatever, like friends, if you love someone, you love them. If you hate them, you're still actively thinking about them a lot. Right. <laughs> like right. you might, it might, Maybe it's a different, if you love them. <laughs> yeah. It's a different kind of thing. And sports, sports fans have this relationship all the time. Like all sports, most sports seasons end poorly in the, in the very end on the very last play, they all end with losses except for like one team. Right. Yeah. But so, but you still have that buy-in around like sort of the negative feelings around the situation. So that's why it's, that's why it's not the opposite because there's still lots of feelings. They're just feelings are just sort of just placed in the different buckets. The indifference one is like, oh, maybe I'll just go read a book, or right. like maybe I'll just watch a movie, a or yeah. maybe I'll just shrug my shoulders and not go to the game or whatever. Like that indifference is a really scary place to be in franchise wise because that is where that's the actual bottom line. Hate and is we, not the bottom line. Indifference we've heard this. is. The bottom line. Like we we've heard this from the fan base, right? Like we've heard we've heard from people on social. We've heard from them when we do our lives in the post game. Like there are there are fans that are like, hey, that's it. Like I'm checking out for the rest of the yeah. year. It's not worth it. And by the way, for I mean, listen, we do this five we do this five days a week, and we, you know we're dedicated to it. It's it's the job. But if you're a fan of a team and you know that there's there's no success here, there's no there's no success this season. Why sacrifice the you know the, those three hours x number of days a week to watch a team get wild to watch them come short and then to watch them not show a level of grit or a level of you know 
listen, do I want players to get chippy with one another on the court? Not really, because that, that seems a little bit like a little bit like theater as well. But I wouldn't hate it from this team. Like I wouldn't hate it if they were bothered by plays or sequences or you had, as we've talked about with Nick Claxton. Listen, sometimes this guy looks like he starts the game wanting to pick up a tech. At least it's something. At least it's a guy that has like a demonstrative nature about him that still wants to give you everything he has. Or, even or this honestly, game was at this not point, example of it. honestly, at this point of the year, I, I never, never say this stuff. Just bench these guys and play uh, Bates D out and play yeah. Clowney and just bench yeah. them. They're going to lose anyway. Well, like, like they're, they're, they're losing. I, I never say this. because I actually think usually this is like not the correct thing. And this usually doesn't work with pro athletes. Yeah. Um, and it, nor should it like, because like when usually when you get paid, it's because you are like the best guys and like whatever. But if these are going to be the attitudes, I don't know, just bench them and just be like, yeah, like yeah, you get paid, but you don't, and they're never going to happen. But I don't know. Is there like a message to be sent? I doubt it really does too much, but, and then get out there and say, he's not good. He's not playing up to the contract. Right. Like he's not playing up to his contract. So we're just going to give someone else a try. I mean, like there are some other ways to go about it. These are desperate. Those are desperate times and desperate measures. And then that's probably don't get there because they're trying to like thread this needle, but I don't know. Try well, something, try funny. something like that. So here's, it's funny too. Cause I use this game just as the example, right? Cause you go and you see Dennis Smith jr. And Lonnie Walker, both play you know, 14 and 12 minutes respectively. They combined seven of, of 10 from the field. They knocked down a couple of triples, eight and nine points. So 17 points combined here. Now, again, you go and decide to put them out there for 25 plus minutes and you bench a couple of players. It's going to look different, but, but to your point of, well, I, I see results here. And the other side that you mentioned there of, well, at some point, you know, send the message. Well, what's the message? Like to, the, kind of your like kind of it's like the theme of the show. What's the message? That you're not you're not playing up to your contract. We're not good enough. Great, but th this thing that we've been selling has not been viable for a, over two months now. Yeah. So what are you selling by benching the players that don't aren't living up to the standard of the thing that you were never going to achieve anyway? And that's that to me is the the most disingenuous thing that the organization has been doing down the stretch of this season is still selling that idea of what this is going to be and staying competitive. It's not true. It's not real. And you could do a lot of things by making excuses to get Mikhail Bridges rest, as, as we've talked about, to try different combinations, as we've talked about. We're going to get more into that coming up this week on the podcast. But it's just, you're not even using, you're not using the built-in excuse that your team is bad and losing games and not showing effort to explore other things, which to me then again goes, then it goes up to the top where you're like, yeah, because we still believe we're going to do X, Y, Z in the off season. And we don't want to fracture any of these individuals yeah. or their experience. Or their perspective. Guess what though? It's fracturing. It's fracturing right now. Because well, losing fractures, losing it. games. Exactly. Yeah. Losing fractures it because yep. you, it gets harder and harder to buy whatever you think you're trying to sell to yourself. Yep. And you know, we'll get at it and we're going to come at you after the, the Toronto game on Monday here, but the, you know, you can tell every, and maybe everyone like organizationally behind the scenes is in lockstep. I think most players know they're not going to be on this team. Right. And it's like, it just because that's just the way the contracts are unfolding and how like they've sort of signaled that they want to get a superstar here in, in two years, you know, but I think most players know they're not going to be here. I think there's, I think they're at extreme risk of some of these guys, like Mikhail, like asking to get traded or whatever. <laughs> right. Like, I think that like, just like these heart quotes, I, I don't take them seriously, but, there's just enough truth to it that you're kind of like, huh? Like, I don't know. Just enough truth for me to tease. Maybe we'll discuss the idea of would you trade Mikhail across town if the Knicks oh, have God. all of these picks that they could? And and maybe because, hey, let them make the mistake of, of the connection from the college days. We got all these players. Maybe we sacrifice a little bit more for Jalen Brunson to get his buddy back, right? Like it opens up some things for sure. I think they traded so many things for OG and stuff. I'm hopefully that's just done. Okay. Anyway, what like the point, the point is that like in, in the end, a ton though, by the way. Just sorry. Yeah, the, in the end, this is sort of like what we're talking about here. And so i don't really, I don't, I, I don't go too much with like the, you know, the amateur level style of like bench the guys and teach them a lesson because money is what usually speaks the loudest. And that's, yeah. that's fine. Like, that's just how it is. My point here is that, I you don't have any other cards to play here and it's just gone so poorly that I, this is like this is where you're throwing your hands up in the moment and being like I just don't know and if no one's gonna try I don't know then no one's gonna try but I th this, they're never gonna do that though because they're trying to toe this line of be a cool organization that play, people want to come to I mean nothing, they're selling so hard on that. going one and nine <laughs> well this is selling so hard on that like it's just like yeah. I, who could look at that and take that seriously it's like it's, it's, it's a joke okay
Anyway, good news. We're going to get out of here. Uh, we will be, <laughs> we'll be, we'll be uh, back after the Toronto game here on Monday. We've got a lot of other stuff to talk about this week, yeah. like you know what we should see out of these, some of these young players, possible combinations we want to see. Maybe we'll see him in Toronto. Didn't see Noah Clowney or anybody here um, or a Noah Clowney come in and play against the Knicks, but I think that could change pretty quickly. In the meantime, make sure you go to wegotnets.com, grab that free ebook. Also, subscribe over on YouTube, lockdownnets.com. Oh, not, not lockdownnets.com. Subscribe on YouTube at lockdownnets. There you go. Oops, I did it again. I played oh, yeah. with your heart. I got lost in the game. Oh, baby, baby. Oops, you think I'm in love, that I'm sent from above. I'm not that innocent. Why that is Brit Gene Spears. One of the all-time great boats. We're back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, 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 basketball.